Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be going over the best $700 streaming and gaming 1080p PC build. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and open this box with the NZXT H510, a beautiful case. This seriously has been my dream case for a very long time, so I was very excited to get this unboxed. Realizing that this was the new case that would be holding all my parts, it was a really great feeling. Let's get a good look at this case. Obviously very beautiful. I love that nice pure white color. All right, so let's get started by taking off the side panel by taking off the two securing screws. Then go ahead, grab the NZXT box in the case. This includes a lot of important screws that we'll need later. And then take the plastic bag off of the cables and tuck it into the bottom of the case. Then go ahead, grab your power supply. Make sure the fan faces the bottom where the vent is. With this particular power supply, you put it towards the bottom then go ahead, put it in its slot. Then grab the NZXT box and get out the 632 screw flats. This is what we'll be using to secure the power supply. Then screw it in. It takes four screws to secure the power supply completely. Once that's done, take the cables that were dangling from the power supply and tuck them into the bottom of the NZXT case. Then ensure that you plug in the power supply and switch it off. This will ground any metal piece attached to the power supply, which is where the anti-static wristband comes in. So go ahead, attach it to a metal piece on the case and then put it on the wristband. I have a little homemade one. This works just fine, but I do recommend that you go out and buy one yourself. Now let's get this B450 Tomahawk Max box unboxed. As you can see included in the box is obviously the motherboard, some extra SATA cables, an IO shield, and a bunch of papers and the driver disc. So now go ahead and take the empty box and place it where you are building your PC and then take the motherboard and place it on top of the anti-static bag. And now let's get the CPU ready for installation. So let's go ahead and unbox the CPU. Comes in a really nice looking case. This is the Ryzen 3600 itself. Also included in the box is of course the cooler. So be very careful when opening the casing for the processor as this is an AM4 chip, meaning that the pins stick out of the bottom. So be very careful not to touch the bottom of the processor, only handle the Ryzen CPU from the sides. So go ahead and locate the triangle on the processor and match it up with the circle on the motherboard. Lift the lever and place the Ryzen CPU into its socket. Be very careful, it's not super difficult. I have really shaky hands, but that was no problem to me. Just be very gentle, just like that. And then lower the lever and your CPU is installed. Remove the placeholders for the CPU cooler. Very easy, just unscrew the four screws surrounding the processor socket. Next up, let's get the CPU cooler ready for installation. All you need to do is take it out of its box. Now with this cooler, you don't have to worry about putting in any screws. It already has the screws attached. Also, this cooler does come with thermal paste pre-applied. If you wanna apply your own, you're more than welcome to do so. Now when installing this cooler, be sure that the AMD logo is facing the IO. Now go ahead, align it with its screw slots, and then you can start screwing in the CPU cooler. Now don't screw it in too much, don't overdo it, that's really bad for the thermal system. Just do it to the point where the screws are nice and snug and you cannot screw them in anymore without using excessive force. Now 
Now you can take the CPU cable and plug it into the header labeled CPU Fan 1. It also only goes in one way, so don't be worried if you think you put it in wrong. And now for aesthetic reasons, just go ahead and tuck in the cable. Next up, let's install the RAM. So you should be able to find on the motherboard or on the instructions what RAM sticks you should be installing first. So in our case, it's DIMMA2 and DIMMB2. So let's go ahead and unbox our Team T4 Delta 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM and get it ready to put it in the proper slots. You can prepare the RAM slots by opening up the two tabs on the sides by pushing down on them and make sure the T-Force logo is facing the top of the motherboard. Now once again, it only goes in one way. So make sure that you have the T-Force logo facing the top of the motherboard. You'll know that the RAM sticks are installed properly if the two tabs at the sides are aligned with the other two on both sides. And now it's time to take the glass panel off of the case. Do this by unscrewing the thumb screw on the back of the case and being very careful removing it, I lower it and then I remove it. Then go put it somewhere very safe. I recommend that you put it on top of a bed. Now that everything is ready and in place, lower the case onto your bench. Before we install the motherboard, we need to install the IO shield. So you install it from the back and pretty much the easiest way to do this is to use your thumb to apply pressure on every side until it clicks in. You will hear a click, you'll know when it's installed. Just do a little tap on the back of the case where the IO shield is and you'll know that it'll stay in place and it is properly installed just like this. All right, so flip over the case as the motherboard is ready to be installed. So what you wanna do is align the IO with the IO shield. As a point of reference, another point of reference you can use is the screw mounts. There are screw mounts on the case and you want to align those with the screw holes on the motherboard. You'll know that you properly put it in when you're able to push the IO into the IO shield and you can see the DVI and audio ports sticking out. To fasten the motherboard, get the 632 screw flats that were in the NZXT box and go ahead and screw them in in the nine dedicated screw holes. Next up, the RGB fans. Now this is completely optional. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the fans that NZXT included, but if you decided to go out and get the RGB fans, remove the four screws from the NZXT fan on each corner, and then replace the fan and reverse the process by putting the screws right back in. Also, be sure to route the fan cable through the upper cutout of the case. This will just make it a bit more convenient for cable management and aesthetics. A cool thing that NZXT included was a little clip at the upper corner of the case which will allow for the cable to be out of sight so be sure to utilize that. Next up, the front two fans. So I got a pack of three RGB fans so I'm going to be putting the other two in the front for air intake. Remove the two thumb screws as I demonstrated and then prepare your workstation by getting out the two fans and placing the fan bracket nearby. You're going to want to be using the KB510 screws that were included with the NZXT case. Go ahead, place the bracket on top of the fan and start screwing it into place. Be sure to use both hands using one to secure and the other of course to screw the fans in. With that done, you just want to repeat the process on the lower part of the bracket with the other fan. Once again, use one hand to secure and the other to screw in the fan and voila, just like that. Very easy and you're just going to want to place it back where it was using the two thumb screws to secure it in place. As for the cables, route them through the back cutout as I did. Yes, time for the catchphrase. So the part you've probably been waiting to hear about, the graphics card. So go ahead and remove these two screws that help secure the PCI brackets. Place that aside. And then you're going to want to loosen these two screws. Chances are these pieces will never see the light of day again, so you can just place them aside carelessly. Um, I have like multiple of these in my drawer of computer parts. I've literally never needed them after installing a graphics card. But if you want to take the safe route, go ahead and hold on to them, I guess. And one last step to prepare this for the graphics card installation, you're going to want to push down on this lever right here. 
Alrighty, so go and grab your graphics card, carefully remove it from the anti-static bag that you had it stored in, and slowly but surely insert it into the PCIe slot. You will hear a click when it makes it in. There's no way you won't be able to hear or notice when it's clicked in, so don't be afraid. You will know when it is properly installed. And right after you hear that click, be sure to secure the graphics card in place by reinstalling the two screws that you removed from the PCI brackets. Like usual, don't use excessive force, just get them in there snug enough to hold the graphics card in place. After that's all done, flip the case right on over as we are going to prepare for the installation of the storage devices. Get all the cables out of the way, you no longer need them to be tucked in as we aren't going to be placing the computer on its backside anymore. Instead, we're gonna flip it onto its front side. Loosen and remove the four screws on the bottom of the case as this will allow us to retrieve the hard drive tray. Now, if you didn't buy a hard drive or don't have a hard drive at all, you don't need to do this step. So go ahead and skip to the timestamp on the screen. Otherwise though, you're going to want to place your hard drive or hard drives into whichever slots you'd like. Now to fasten them, you're going to want to use the 632 screw flats that were included in the NZXT box. Now I don't think you need to do all three personally, I just did the two on the front and the back and just repeated the process on the other side. But hey, if you want your hard drives to be extra secure, go ahead and install all 12 screws. So now we can take the hard drive tray with the hard drives installed and put it back in its proper position using the four screws that we removed earlier. And it's 2020, so of course we want to have an SSD installed. So in order to do that, remove the single screw that holds the SSD tray. Once you're finished with that, place the SSD upside down in the SSD tray and use two to four screws to secure it in place. Fortunately, there is a snapping mechanism so you won't have to use two hands constantly to secure it in place while at the same time putting in the screw. Now let's get started on plugging in the power, starting with the 24 pin connector. So as you can see, there is a little notch, so make sure you have the four pin connector in front of the 20 pin connector before you go ahead and plug it into the motherboard. Now you do need to use a bit of force when plugging in the 24 pin connector. Don't be afraid the motherboard isn't gonna crack or any of that. Just make sure you apply a good amount of force, but not like a crazy amount. You'll know it's properly plugged in when the little lever snaps in place. And if we take a look around the back, you can see that I cable managed the 24 pin connector like so, fastening it using the Velcro attachments. Next up, let's connect the CPU power cable. In order to do that though, you will have to disconnect the upper fan, which is not a big deal. It's really easy to uninstall and reinstall. And then you can go ahead and connect the CPU power connector. It's pretty easy. I assure you it doesn't take nearly as much force or effort as the 24 power connector does. Then of course, reconnect the upper fan. Next up, the USB 3.0 connector. Keep in mind that this connector is attached to the case, not the power supply. Plug it right on in in its proper location. This won't take too much force. And right after that, the audio connector. This goes on the very bottom left connector. It connects just like the CPU fan did as it connects via pins. And same goes for the front panel connector, which connects to the pins labeled JFB1. We're nearly finished. Now let's connect the SATA cable. For an external SSD, one SATA cable goes on the bottom right corner of the solid state drive. And for a hard drive, it goes in the port around the middle, right next to its power connector on its left. As for connecting the other end of the SATA cables, you can pretty much plug them into any you'd like as long as it's not these top two SATA connectors, because if you happen to want to connect an M.2 SSD down the road, these will become unavailable for use, so if possible, avoid the top two. Of course, these storage devices will also need power, 
So locate the SATA power connectors and plug them into the SSDs and hard drives if you have any. And yes, they do use the same exact type of power connectors. And the final step, connecting the power for the graphics card. So you're going to want to locate the power connector labeled PCIe and plug it into your graphics card. Make it look nice, tidy, and neat, and voila, PC is ready to be booted up. So once you verify that everything is in working order, it's time to do some cable management. So there's no real true way to cable manage. I mean, as long as it looks tidy and neat and looks like something you can dismantle if you need to down the road, then you did a good job. You can try to replicate the way I did mine, but seriously, there's no way to go wrong as long as it all fits and is tidy and in working order. So yeah, that will do it for this video, guys. In the next videos, I will be doing benchmarkings and things you should do to set up the computer like drivers and chipsets, etc., and how to work the RGB. So be sure to stay tuned for those videos, but that will completely wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you enjoy the content you're seeing and want to see the next videos in this series, be sure to drop a sub. Thanks for watching. Peace out.